Greetings and salutations to all you folks out there. It's time for another Tutorial Tuesday. This time we're doing another faction tutorial and it's going to be about Seraphim. I'm doing Aeon and Seraphim first because Cybern and UEF tend to get played a lot more, so it's kind of more in the realm of column no common knowledge. And also, Seraphim and Aeon tend to be the harder ones to figure out how to play. I know there's a lot of intricacies to Cybern, but with Seraphim, there's not a whole lot of unit options. They have fewer units than the other factions do, and sometimes you need a little help figuring out what to apply to what situation. So we're going to jump into this one and see what we can do with it. Um, I'm going to go over just a general strategy um, concerning early game, shifting to mid game, shifting to late game, and then some viable strategies for each phase. So, let's talk about the ACU first. With Aeon, we talked about how the Aeon ACU is an excellent supporter. Um, it can get the comm shield and the distance gun upgrade and the radar gun upgrade, all of which complements the Aurora spam in the early game, and that lets you reach out and kill harder targets while Aeon has the weaker T2. Well, the Seraphim Commander is all about straight up brute force or end game potential. You can go either way with it. It has a similar line of upgrades to the UEF Commander, but then it also has some strengths of the Aeon, one of those being that the Seraphim Commander does have double resource allocation. So if you're playing in a rear slot or taking up towards the end game, you can definitely use these. Um, 3k power and 16 mass a piece for your output. So that's a substantial chunk of change just coming from your ACU. And then, you know, you can get the T3 build suite, and then you can get the restoration field, which heals all nearby units. It can be extremely handy for boosting the regen, basically for free, of any T4s that you happen to park near your ACU. You can get back a lot of that health really easily, so that'll help you out. But, we're going to talk about the early game. Uh, we got the Tech 1 units right over here. <clears throat> Let's move this Yathafa out of the way. We'll talk about him later. The... Seraphim and UEF tanks are pretty similar. Um, the, the Seraphim tank has a little less health, is slightly faster, um, but overall it just about exactly compares to the UEF tank. Um, the artillery is a hover piece, so like Aeon, Seraphim gets a leg up in the water maps. You can push these units across for raiding very early on, but their scout does not float, so you can't send radar with your arty. Um, Anti-air is nothing special, it's pretty much just there to protect you from bombers, does a decent job of it, and they have a combination land scout lab. A sailing counts as, well it costs almost exactly half as much as a lab, and it has about half the DPS and about half the health, but in practice, Selens just about always lose to labs because they can only fire in a straight line, so you can't really you can't really fire on the run with them because if you run past an opponent, they can't shoot backwards. Their gun is pretty much locked into the dead forward position, and since they're actually walking, they have to face the direction that they're running. But one cool ability that this does have is if you put it on hold fire and let it sit for four seconds, it stealths and cloaks. So you can't actually see it unless there's an Omni there. Really nasty trick, you can park this little booger on top of a mass extractor and your enemy can't build there, and you get free radar coverage. It's about the only way to fix that is to bump the en bump the Selen out of the way with the Engineer with some concentrated move orders, or to get your ACU next to it in order to get the Omni to get it out of the way. Now, to complement this pretty standard T1 spam, one more thing I will say about Zooey's are actually fairly practical anti-unit tools. Um, they're very good at base destruction. This is probably the best all-round artillery, but you have to pay for it. This costs 50% more than any other faction's T1 artillery, and it is, I would say, about 50% better. So it is mass equivalent, but it's awesome. <laughs> Be careful when you're spamming these, because if you spam them on the scale of other factions, T1 artillery, you're going to burn a ton of mass doing this. The ACU can be tuned out to complement T1 spam very easily. You've got the gun upgrade and the T2 build suite on separate arms. 
So you can get either the T2 or the gun upgrade first and then grab the other one and you have two relatively cheap pretty early upgrades that both make your ACU extremely formidable. With the T2 suite you can build Tech 1 radars near yourself to give yourself some coverage. You can throw down T1 point defense to get some more damage online 5 seconds a piece. You can build anti-air at 4 seconds a piece. It makes this ACU very very hard to kill. Um, and it did, in addition to that, you get the extended range of the gun upgrade and double the DPS. So this ASCU right here with a good amount of T1 spam is absolutely killer. You can run over a lot of stuff with this. And then as far as your mid, you can go a couple different directions with that. You can get the nano repair system, which gives you a tremendous health boost. Um, let's check in here. We're at 14,500. Let's drop this sucker down, and we're jumping to 20,500. So 6k health, and well over doubling your regen potential. And again, that is a reasonably priced upgrade. 2,000 mass, 90,000 power is not too bad. That's going to put you smack dab in the middle of the T2 phase, as far as consumption rates go. And then the other one you can get that is cheaper and arguably more useful early game, is the TAC Launcher. Turns your ACU into a mobile TAC launching behemoth and you can use this to wipe out pretty much all of your enemy's eco. It has three area of effect and it is all around massively destructive. You can launch this, well let me uh, let me walk away from my hives here so I can show you the fire rate on this. With the T2 ACU it does build reasonably fast but you are going to need at least one T2 power generator or a whole bunch of T1 power generators in order to use this effectively. So there's one. You can see the T2 ACU builds at a reasonable rate, but it is consuming 24 mass and almost 500 power per tick to build these. So that is going to be the amount of mass and power that you're going to have to be putting out to be able to sustain this. And that's basically cruiser rate of fire. Um, well, maybe not that much, but uh, you get the idea. You can do a whole lot of damage really quickly with that, and that is <laughs> that is absolutely horrendous on your opponent's eco. So that is about the extent of what you're going to have in the T1 phase, and you're going to be shifting to T2. Now, T2 for Seraphim is probably all around the strongest T2 in the game, thanks to this little guy right here, the Ilshiva. The Ilshiva is an absolute monster of a unit, 2,500 health, costs the same as an Obsidian, has absolutely massive range. You can see it is almost on par with a Guncom, not quite at range bot levels, but it can match range with an unupgraded, or an ACU that does not have the gun upgrade, rather. Um... And it is basically a walking T1 point defense. Excellent rate of fire, excellent DPS. This thing absolutely massacres T1. So if you can get a clump of these together, four or five in a group, and you kite them around using their awesome long range, you will be able to just obliterate opponents who are still completely at tech one spam. This is especially handy versus Aeon because it gives you a very hardy... Um, mainline unit. You don't have to rely on range bots or T1 tanks or T1 bombers rather or anything like that to try to manipulate the battlefield in your favor to get rid of the Auroras. You can just straight up build your mainline T2 unit and it demolishes Auroras. So that is a huge advantage of this unit. Then you've got Hover Flak which can take care of anti-air anywhere on the map, water or no. They have a very good highly front-loaded hover tank. This is fast as all get out, an excellent raiding unit to pair with the Ilshiva, but does not have enough damage to replace the Ilshiva, not by a long shot. So do not build hover tanks as your mainstay unit. Use them for raiding purposes or to cross water. That is what they're intended for. And then they have a very well-balanced mobile missile launcher. It is not the fastest firing one, and it is not as good as the Cybern, but it is better than the other two factions. So this is a good unit to keep with you for getting rid of pesky point defenses. Now, when you're in that late T2 phase, you are going to be wanting to complement your army with air. 
um, Seraphim does have a pretty good fighter bomber. They have the Notha, which has extremely high DPS in a very concentrated form. Uh, it is easy to dodge, but as far as stationary targets go, the Noth is extremely good at sniping things off. Decent AoE, nice little compact bomb there. Uh, it's not as good as Cybern at sniping things. I think probably the uh, the Janus is probably worse at sniping than the Notha is. Eh, they're about the same. T1 bomber is identical to other factions, and they have the interceptor for air control. That is pretty much like any other faction. So the only difference for the air with Seraphim is going to be their transports. Their transports have huge capacities. Now one disadvantage is that you can't build ghetto gunships because they do not have labs. They have selens which cannot shoot from transports. So you can't take advantage of that. But T1 carries 8 units as opposed to 6 for the other factions and the transport costs the same. So you're going to be able to lift more units with less mass and that is extremely handy. The other thing is their T2 transport is identical in its role. It has far more capacity than the other factions T2 transports do. Um, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 16 T1 units or 8 T2 I think? And their T2 transport is the only one that can carry more um, it, I think it can carry four T3 units at a time, which is double that of Cybern and Aeon. So you're going to be able to do a lot of lifting with the T2 transports. Pair that with the hover artillery, the Zooey, the, it makes for absolutely brutal drops. I would say Seraphim is king of the drops, at least in the early game. UEF matches or beats them late game with that T3 transport that they have. But as far as just the sheer lifting capacity, Seraphim has it in spades. So you're done with the T2 phase and you're starting to shift to T3 phase. With Seraphim, I would wait to shift to T3 till after other factions do. Your Ilshiva is by far the strongest T2 unit and Seraphim has by far the weakest T3. So over investing into T3 units early on is a very bad idea because your T3 units are just not going to be able to compete mass for mass with the other factions units um, until you can get a large quantity of them on the field. One thing that Seraphim does have that the other factions do not is this T3 mobile shield which can be used on water or on land. It does complement the navy very nicely. Um, this is going to add 10k health a pop to your army so you need to use these as much as you can to help break fire for your Othams. Um, the, the Otham has a couple of problems with it. To be completely honest, I hope that this gets a very slight rebalance um, in the next balance patch. It is a little bit too slow to catch other units quickly. It does not have quite enough health to be super survivable. And you can see it has two different range rings here. It has two guns totaling to 400 DPS. 150 of it is on the long range. Um very front loaded gun and 250 of it is on this shorter range gun so your lesser amount of damage is in the long range ring you're going to want to close to the red range ring to do anything significant and to me that is backwards um, i would really like for it to be swapped but i don't know if that's going to happen so you're going to have to protect your Othams while they close distance with the other factions t3 units that's what you got your shield for the other thing that they have for reaching out they have a T3 mobile artillery that is second only to the Cybern in area of effect, but is far, far more uh, powerful than the Cybern artillery. It does way more DPS. So this is going to be incredibly handy for laying down carpet damage on incoming groups of units. And then they have the sniper bot, which actually has two modes. You can see, again, we have two range rings here. Um, if you deploy it, it... I, I'm going to try to remember this. I may be slightly incorrect on this. I don't think that the accuracy changes between these two firing modes. What changes is you can have the shorter range with a faster firing rate than the Aeon artillery. That may be it. It may be movement speed. Yes. Okay. 
So mode one is shorter range, faster movement, and faster firing rate than the Aeon sniper bot. But if you switch the firing modes, you get the longer range ring, which is longer than the Aeon range. It does more DPS, but your artillery is going to be cripplingly slow and it is going to have a much longer reload time than the first mode. So if you're sniping single targets or setting up a siege on a fire base, you're going to want to deploy it, get the extra DPS and that little bit of extra range. But if you're using it as an anti-personnel weapon, you're going to want to keep it in the primary firing mode and use it as a mobile unit. So you do want to mix these in. This is going to be what helps you lay down damage on incoming Percivals and Bricks. Um, the Autumn can take care of itself pretty well versus Harbingers, but like the Harbingers, it is just paper against Percivals and Bricks unless you provide it with shield coverage, you soften up incoming units with the artillery first, and you have a good bank of sniper bots that you're kiting around the outside edge with to just keep laying down the damage on those Percivals and Bricks. Seraphim can hypothetically keep up with UEF and Cybern, at least for the most part, but it takes a lot more babysitting, a lot more careful unit mix, and you just have to think about it really hard um, as far as what all is going on. The only other thing that I will say about the Otham is that it does have some slight uh, firing trajectory issues because it's two, it has three guns. You can see the one up on the top there, and then the other two are on the wheel hubs, and they're so low to the ground that it shares a problem with the Rhino where it has a hard time firing over very rough terrain. Um, well, that's too close. Let me move that out a little bit. You can see how long the reload time is on the top cannon. The, uh, the two hub guns right there are going to be your shorter range ones. So it's going to close... There we go, until it can fire them all. All right, so that's the Otham. Now what's gonna pair with your T3 units is the chicken. Uh, the the Yathotha is probably in the current balance, I would say the best single T4 for dealing with incoming hordes of units. And that is strictly because of the huge, huge area of effect on its weapons. It can damage so many units at one time, it is not even funny has the Gatling cannon, cannon, the large cannon, and then this huge blast that fires every once in a while and travels extremely slowly. If that connects, it just has ludicrous amounts of damage on like a, I don't know, five or six area of effect. But this thing will be damaging six, seven T3 units at a time with its total DPS, whereas the Galactic Colossus, while it has similar DPS is only firing at one unit at a time. Now it does have the tractor claws and I will say that stacked GCs are way stronger than stacked Yathathas, but if you're going to build one T4 to complement your land army, the Yathatha is probably going to be the best bang for your buck. So that is something that the Seraphim does have going for it. Now, late land game, if you choose to go the path of the Rambo with your ACU, which I would not super highly recommend, but you can do, you can actually make your Seraphim ACU incredibly strong versus units. You've got your gun upgrade for range, you've got your double nano, and then you've got, um, oh, did not mean to click T3, let's do gun. The secondary gun upgrade is a damage increase. It gives you a whopping 1,000 DPS on two or three area of effect. I cannot remember. It may be two area of effect. And that just lets you just lay waste to groups of T2 and T3 units because the accumulated damage is extremely high. Add that in with your overcharge and you've got a really strong tool. Then you've got 37,000 health on pushing 200 regen um, to give you the survivability that you need. Once you get five veterancies, you're going to be close to 60,000 health. 
This is an absolute tank of an ACU with huge amounts of regen that's going to be able to, once it engages, it's going to recharge its HP very quickly so that it can jump back into the fight. As a personally related story, I have killed two monkey lords and a GC in the same game with this commander on full combat upgrades with three or four mobile shields to help add some extra HP. This ACU is not to be underestimated, but at the same time, you're kind of putting all your eggs in one basket because if your ACU gets sniped, it's game over. It's not like a T4 where you can throw your T4 out there and if it dies, no big deal, I'll just reclaim it and build another one. Um, so while it can usually trump other direct fire T4s in a lot of cases, I don't know that I would take that gamble, but it can be really hilarious in a team game to throw this tank of an ACU at somebody and just watch them die. It is much more humiliating than a telemazer <laughs> because you're walking away screaming the whole way and you just can't do anything about it as opposed to getting an ACU dropped on your head out of nowhere and just dying instantaneously. All right, pairing up with these, we've got the T3 air options. Seraphim has a pretty standard ASF. All the ASF are relatively close to each other, and they do have an excellent, and I do mean excellent, all-around bomber. It has the second highest area of effect. It does very good damage second to the Aeon. Hold on, I'm trying to remember. It, uh, no, UEF has a smaller area of effect than Seraphim does. I am pretty pretty positive. If I have that backwards, I'm sure someone will let me know in the comments. Um, so Strat Bomber is a pretty standard tool, but Seraphim is going to be substantially better versus groups of units than the Aeon one is because of the larger area of effect. And speaking of area of effect and anti-unit, the air experimental for the Seraphim is the Owasa, and this guy is beyond brutal versus groups of units it has the bomb which has the mother of all area of effects it can decimate groups of percivals and bricks in just a single shot takes out mobile shields and everything anything within that ring right there is gonna die in a t3 army and you can just it is horrendous the amount of damage you can do in just a very short time now the biggest issue people have with the awasa is the fact that it tends to misfire and it takes a little bit of control to get this thing to work properly because it's just a pain to work with to be honest um, you do want to use ground fires not normal fires because it fires much more reliably doing this a lot of times when you um, if you just target something if you target a building or a unit and the Owasa comes in, if it's not flying exactly right, if it hasn't scouted it before, if it loses sight of it, there's a whole bunch of factors that can play into it. It just doesn't fire reliably. So you're going to want to use that ground fire and it fires just about 100% of the time. And then to get the range right, you're going to have to be basically outside your ring right here on an approach. Um, Ah, there we go. I did it. That was a hover bomb. If you're flying forwards to get it to drop, but if you're able to hover it over a single target, you can see what I'm doing here. Clicking right under it, wait for the reload time, A, and kaboom. And that is a hover bomb, folks. You just keep clicking and clicking and clicking and clicking, and you can make it do pretty much whatever you want to do as long as you wait for the reload time. I did not wait long enough. You can see my reload bar there wasn't full. So that is how you do it. The only other thing that you need to know is <clears throat> if you're coming in at full speed, you can throw a bomb a pretty fair distance. Um, let's throw one out here. Just as soon as you see it drop, slam on the brakes, and the bomb will fly out in front and kill whatever, and you don't have to go out of your way and... Um, you don't have to fly over any extra SAMs or anything. You can just pound your way into a base from the outside edge. So depending on how much time you're willing to spend learning how to micro and learning how to control this bomber, it is probably the strongest single air unit. But if you don't feel like babysitting it and you just kind of throw it at the other team and forget about it, it might drop one bomb and then it's just going to be a mass donation no other help for it so that is the awasa that pretty much wraps up the units in this game 
um, uh, turned on tracking. There we go. Um, so that is about all I've got to say about the Seraphim. If you have any other questions or things to add, by all means, throw them into the comments and I will do my best to answer them or at least just read them to see what the 2K players are saying about what I'm saying because their views are always at least as valid as mine are. And sometimes they have some extra insight to add to things. Okay. Oh, I forgot one unit. Quick note. Seraphim SACU. If you get into the late, 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 late game, Seraphim SACU is the strongest anti-T4 ACU. It does have the overcharge ability like the actual Seraphim ACU does. Um, so you're going to be able to get nano repair, overcharge, and body shield in order to give it some extra survivability. So that's going to make it basically a dedicated T4 killer at that point. The other thing that you can do with it is you can get the teleport upgrade and the rapid fabricator upgrade and either the intel system or the TAC launcher, which will allow you to teleport into enemy territory. You'll have rapid fabricator and intel so you can build bases or you can have rapid fabricator and TAC launcher so that you can just sit there and launch TAC missiles at everything, which is hilarious and makes for awesome sniping. You should totally try it sometime because any faction's T3 shield, if you teleport the SACU in one side of the shield and launch an a tack missile at the other side of the shield, the sh missile will actually travel inside the shield bubble without ever contacting the shield, and all of your missiles will hit the intended target with basically no warning because you're firing them at point blank range. So, pro tip there you can snipe someone before they telemaze you with the Seraphim SACU. All right, that wraps it up. I don't think I forgot anything, so before I bumble about anymore, I'm going to go ahead and check out of this. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys on Thursday for a game cast. Also, don't forget on Saturday, 6 p.m. Eastern U.S. time, we've got the live cast that I've started doing weekly. Tune in for question and answer time a live cast of a game, and then I'll play a game with you guys explaining my thoughts as I go along on what I'm doing and why. So I'll see you guys over there. Adios.